All right, Grizz Nation, here we are back again. Uh, we are going to be talking about the Missouri State game this this episode. We'll also preview North Dakota. Uh, but before we get into that, guys, we've got some uh, Grizz updates we would like to get to. Um, volleyball, uh, they went and played some tough competition this uh, week and in the Grand Canyon Invitational. Uh, lost 0-3 to against Grand Canyon. Lost zero to three against Fresno State, but came back and beat Oregon State three to one. Yeah, um, which is awesome. Uh, first time I think like since like 1980 that they've beat it, uh, Oregon yeah, State. No. Soccer team and volleyball team beat Oregon State. So. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they actually have an exhibition this Tuesday at Dahlberg Arena at 6 p.m. So go support them if you can uh, get there. If you can't, it is going to be not on ESPN Plus because I believe it's an exhibition, so they can't um, do those. But they will be leaving or they'll be the, at the Eliason Invitational, which is in Dahlberg Arena. Right. Uh, they'll play Utah Valley and I think like Southern Miss – and Boise State, and that all starts on Friday, and then it goes through Friday, Saturday, and then the last game's on Sunday. So uh, definitely go see some volleyball and, and support those ladies. Yeah, especially with the football team being out of town. Exactly, exactly. You don't have an excuse. Um, we go into soccer, guys. Soccer played – I got sorry, I'm trying to scroll down here. Uh, they had – last time we talked – Ooh, they lost to Fresno State in a really a really close one, uh, one to two, and then they played in Missoula, IU, Indianapolis. They beat that team one nil. Um, they are going to be going to Colorado Springs and go to Laramie. So they play uh, Thursday Sunday games against Air Force in Wyoming. So um, and then they'll be back in Missoula against UND on that following Thursday. So. Um, got to be it, getting close to starting the big sky play soon, I would think. For uh, they've got one, two, three, four, five, five games left, and then uh, big sky yeah. starts. Yep, so, um, so yeah, they're four and two right now, guys. Um, they've played some really, really tough competition. Their two, um, losing games or losing matches are all away, uh, away games, so four and oh at home. So, uh, definitely go support them if you can. Uh, go support them out at uh, Missoula, and if you can, so uh, awesome. And they 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 actually pulled out a win, and um, they were missing two of their starters last or Sunday, yesterday. So, uh, but they did pull out the win there. So, nice. um, yeah. Um. Well, what we're here to talk about, guys? We uh, had some football over the weekend, finally. Yeah. Um, and we went into this game, the blackout, uh, you know, I think we all had lofty expectations and I, I think that you really don't know these, these first games are so hard, Luke, oh, yeah. knowing who, who their opponent's going to really be, um, especially Missouri state when they've brought in 16, 17 FBS transfers, right? You don't know what they're, how they're going to mesh. Uh, we're filling holes as well with, with FBS drop downs. Uh, we have brand new quarterbacks. Um, and so, uh, it started off pretty good. I mean, you know, that Eli Gilman touchdown was, was pretty mm -hmm. good. And then, you know, the extra point bang off the, <laughs> well, I mean, right. even with that Morrison got player of the week this week. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that was awesome. And, and he, he has a pretty good leg. So. Yeah. It's always yeah. good to good to see. So, um, so what were your first impressions, Luke? Well, I mean, we'll just let's talk about it right now. Grossman yeah. didn't play. Bergen didn't play. Yep. Wilson didn't play. And Houston. so we got three, Houston didn't play. Houston, yeah, we got all these all Americans that aren't playing. Yeah. Uh, and Reese, you know, Reese's Senior Bowl watch list. Well, Missouri State's Senior Bowl watch list guy <laughs> did not disappoint. I mean, he yeah. was as good as. They say it was, um, yeah, it's huge. Like, I mean, to tackle that man, holy cow. Well, and you, just to tackle him, but then the agility he has, yeah. uh, I would be very surprised if he wasn't playing somewhere on Sundays. Yeah, no, I, and usually if you're on that watch list, that means that there's a really good chance you're going to be, you yeah. know, either going to the combine or, you know, getting picked up somewhere. And he very well could be. I mean, he was, he was really good. 
Yeah. Um, I was just surprised at how well their quarterback played too. Like that guy, he was throwing some passes that I'm just like, and the way that his receivers were catching the ball too, just making these circus catches. When, yeah. I mean, I was impressed. So, yeah. Um, but I mean, too, I, I was impressed with our defense. It starts off, we get them to punt. I'm like, oh, great. We're going to get the ball in great possession. And then we fumble the punt. Yeah. If that doesn't happen, if we catch that punt and just down it right there, the whole start of the game is a different game. We we lost another possession, and a lot of you probably heard this. Uh, I think at the post game, Bobby talked about why I outplayed the whole first half when see Fife. Well, we didn't have very many offensive plays. They didn't have yeah. enough plays that they wanted to play them in, so that's why they kept playing it. Um, and I think that two in the, that two minute offense, I runs that pretty well. He but does. the whole thing. I mean, he was throwing really good balls too. And our guys are dropping fonts who doesn't drop passes is dropping passes. Now, the great thing was, is later on in the game, he started catching. Like, yeah, guys made corrections. They did what they're supposed to do. We ground out a win and won the thing. Um, well, even like, even like the wide receivers, like, because fonts can sometimes have, uh, he, he has an tendency to, to catch the ball and kind of like start running and kind of mm-hmm. then loses it. It doesn't mean that his hands are good. He just tries to, run before he catches the ball. Um, But even like, you know, uh, Keelan White, somebody that usually has really good hands was not making catches as well. And that kind of skewed, like, uh, I know there's going to be talk, right? Who's going to be the the, the quarterback, right? And we can get that to that. But they had the identical yardage. Right. Let's say, you know, they catch those three or four balls that they could have caught. It would be, it would have been a whole different, yeah, you know, whole different. instead of nine for 19, you're looking at 13 for 19 with, you know, yeah. over a hundred yards. That looks a whole lot better than nine for 19. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I'm still, they're both good. Um, yeah. I feel like we're a lot further along than we were last year at this oh, point. Oh yeah. Knowing who <laughs> the quarterback is going to be or, or like who the talented and talent where the talent lied and stuff. And, I mean, just looking at Ayat's footwork and the way he throws the ball and the way he runs the offense and just reads, I think he's he's doing very well, especially for a redshirt freshman. Yeah, um, exactly. Fife did really well too, though. Like he did, I guess my out of my expectations, he did better than I expected him to do. Like I can't Ayat was right where I thought he'd be, and yeah. Fife was definitely better than I than I expected. So. Well, Fife Fife came in like the like he, he mature, right? He was mm-hmm. the mature veteran. He's been in that, that, that instance, that, that, that circumstance. Like, I mean, right. he said it on the, uh, the post game, you know, this is where I was at, you know, Fresno state. Like right. I, I was always had to have, be ready to just in case my, yeah. my number was called. So, you know, he, he had that kind of um, charisma and that, that knowledge of, of patience. I, yeah. I think that um, I got, in some instances, instances try to do too much, and that's that that you know freshman kind of coming out when he turned and his knee hit the ball and he fumbled it. Um, yeah. You know, last year we see him, we see we gosh, I can't even talk. We saw him do that constantly. Um, it's just some things he's got to learn, and, and he did in that drive. He threw it away instead of trying to run for it. Right. But uh, I, I think that we've got two good quarterbacks. Um, I, I don't feel kind of nervous about. I, I feel a whole lot better than I did last year about. Yeah, me too. About where we're at with the quarter, quarterback position. Um, I feel like we're we, we're not confined to. Hey, we've got to have McDowell run. You know, fifteen times. Right. Like, no, our quarterbacks. All they have to do is just get it out to our playmakers yeah, because we saw that in the second half. Is when they got it to when our wide receivers got the ball. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. They, when uh, we had that first half, and I know that the timing was, was off. We didn't get the ball very much, but they kind of went away from Eli Gilman as well, as we started throwing up the ball a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And second half, we start running a little bit more with Eli and he starts getting it going. I think that if they do that with both of those guys, they kind of open up the run game to open up that pass game. Yeah. Um, and I just, when I was looking at that, that first half and then looking at, uh, Ayat, man, if he could have that security blanket of Cole Grossman, yeah. I just think like, it would make uh, well, I mean, a just tight end is always your favorite target. 
you got tight end. Yeah, Grossman and like you know, we said Bergen was out. He's one of our best receivers. So yeah. you got two All Americans right there that that weren't playing. And so uh, them playing does that make this the 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 gap of the win a little much bigger? It very well could have. Yeah. Um, we don't see Junior dropping punts like that. I mean, no. although Deck, you know, did a good job and redeemed himself later on too. So uh, it's the first game. There's growing pains and stuff there. Yeah. But, you know, we ground that one out and won it. You know, it's like we came back and won the thing. And I, I truly believe Missouri State's a better team than ninth in the, the ninth. Uh, Missouri yeah. Valley Conference. So Yeah, and I was thinking that too. I'm like, how is this team ninth? Yeah, they, they like, played, they played no their way. tails off. They were playing hard. Um, but there was just – there was a lot of, like, little mistakes that our team made just like – but all correctable, like not like mm-hmm. – you know, just egregious things, just little things where someone missed something here, overran this, or or tried too hard. Like yeah. on defense, there was times you could tell guys were trying to. It's like, no, just do your job. Don't yeah. do too much. So, and we're constantly over <laughs> overrunning and not containing the end. Uh, yeah, which is not really like us. We're not trying yeah. to. You know, our ends contain and our middle pushes the front and we have the holes for our, our, our yeah. linebackers. That's what well, we usually do. I, I was impressed with the new 99. Um, yeah. He was, he played very well. Uh, you know, I, I'd he, love to hear what Gubbs thought. Cause he was at that game. The guys got their rings before the, uh, the game started and just to see what he thought. But I was, I was impressed with their defensive line. That was one part that I was a little nervous about, but I thought they played pretty well. I mean, Hayden Harris got played in the player of the game, I believe. Yeah. Uh, on defense. So like two and a half sacks. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just like as it progressed, you know, I mean, we ne- you never have more than the four quarters. But I think if we kept going, I think we could have stretched that even farther, the win. Um, yeah. I'm just yeah. I'm just glad that we pulled it off and we learned a lot of stuff. But, you know, we're 1-0, and oh, and that's what we wanted to be. So there's some people out there I feel like almost felt like we lost. It's like, no, man, we won. Yeah, yeah. we didn't blow them out like I thought we would. We yeah. thought we would, but at the same time, this is a way better team than I thought we were going to see. Um, yeah. Like the people I talked to at Springfield down there, they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, our, we're, we're kind of bad. And I don't think they expected them to be that good. No. They played very well. So. The quarterback played out of his mind. He, yeah. he, and the wide receivers helped him when he didn't throw. Like, like some of those catches, I was like, how did that guy catch that? Like yeah. how do we not like deflect it? And, and yeah. Bobby said that in his press conference this week is um, – pregame or you know post you know whatever yeah. the weekly is that our guys in that first half didn't didn't make those enough plays on the defense at the side to, to help with that and we didn't catch the ball either so yeah um just a rundown guys of the stats here um you know it was it was pretty close first downs 23 with the grizz 22 for the uh bears uh rushing yards you look at 167 to 99, so we still held them under 100 yards. Um, their average is 2.9. Um, ours was about 4.8. Um, let's see here. Passing, uh, we had 180. They had 257. Um, we had one touchdown. They didn't get any touchdowns on us for passing, but they did. We had about 6.9 yard, yard average. They had 6.6. Total offense, they beat us by nine yards on that, um, even though we had a, a better average play. Um, you know, we lo- we had two fumbles. We lost one of those, mm-hmm. uh, which hurt. Um, penalties, and this is the crazy thing. They had 13 penalties for 112 yards. Yeah. We had four for 49, which you take off that <laughs> – that Xavier uh, Harris personal foul, which was not a personal foul. It, if it was a personal foul, it should have been against the other guy because the other guy was pushing him. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. He see was it. pushing yeah. him into the sideline. We didn't. Um, we didn't quite understand how that got called on us. No, and he got shoved and yeah. I, I had some other friends with us that aren't big Grizz fans, but they were there to watch because we were camping and watching it, and they were like, "What the heck is, you know, just." None of us understood that. So. Or that blatant pass interference in the end zone. Yeah. Like, I was just like, you're not going to call that? Yeah, yeah. There's like, a so. big sky refs. But, you know, it is what it is. You can't leave it up to the refs to win it for you or lose it for you, hopefully. But Yeah. Uh, punting, guys, this is kind of a key, too, is, you know, our average punt, 45.2. Um, our Ty Morrison, that's why he was named, you know, special teams mm-hmm. player of the uh, week, uh, beat out – 
their, you know, all American punter, uh, Burkett or whatever his name is. So, um, did a really good job punting, had, uh, one inside the 50, um, two inside the 20. Um, and so it really did a good job. So, well, that's just it. Like how do we keep getting these punters just blows me away. I mean, just, we keep getting awesome punters and losing them somewhere else or they're yep. at, you know, and then now we get another, I mean, yep. yeah. That's um, pretty awesome what he what he was able to do. So yeah, and then Glasgow Glasgow did an awesome job with kickoffs. Mm-hmm. You know, five touchbacks. He averaged about sixty four point three. Um, so uh, you know, and some of those like the the punt returns and stuff like that. Drew Deck did a good job. It, it's just it's just different, right? You yeah. look at Bergen and some of those that he did. You know, maybe fifteen or, or twenty yards. You look at that and like, oh, Bergen could have c- cut it here and, and you know made thirty or forty, um, yeah. or, or maybe even broke. Um, so just kind of, it's a little bit different. Well, I'm sure you know. the uh, opposing team, because on the two deep last week, and I was saying never trust the two deep. Yeah, and it showed Bergen playing and like, being our returner, and I'm sure the other team was like, oh, he's not back there, kick it. You yeah, know? he's always yeah. he's got that factor too, but. I, I'm super pumped with Dak. I mean, like yeah. having him as our, our backup, if you will, once Bergen's back. But he he, uh, he corrected himself, and that's the big yeah. thing I think when we're watching is are the guys progressing in the right direction? And they are. They all do. Yeah. Everybody yeah. continued to get better throughout the game. And in years past, there's times we didn't see that. Yeah. And we, we could have lost games like this, where instead we won it. Um, and so I think, you know, I, I think Bobby likes it when we have things to coach about, like he'll even find stuff when there isn't a lot, but this gave the whole coaching staff a lot of stuff to coach towards this week and yeah. prepare our team even more. And so, I mean, I think they're going to be even more prepared and we got a great test coming up this week. So, Well, and then this is the big thing right here is 23 minutes and 23 seconds for us, 36, 37 for them. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was the, that hurt us. We did, we did not get enough plays in. Yeah. Um, and one another thing that killed us is there were six of 14 on third down conversion. We could not get a third down stop, even if it was third and long. Yeah. Um, and usually we, we get those, you know, towards the end of the game, we got those, but man, there was, there was a couple quarters there where we weren't getting those. Well, and on those, some of those third down conversions that were longer ones, if you look at the film, it's just like, there's one little breakdown here or there. Again, that yeah. whole, not everybody's doing their one eleventh, And if they do, then that goes away. Yeah. So, um, but that's all coachable stuff. You know, it's yeah. not like, it, it's things that like, you know, that they can get better on. It doesn't, it's not just like they just played terrible the whole game or something like they're, yeah. it, it's things that we can fix. And I expect, you know, our team to fix going forward. So. Well, and like the, the last play, right. They we're driving down there and we get that. Uh, I think it was either personal foul or something like that where it was 15 yards and basically pushed us back where we had to kick a field goal. Mm-hmm. You know, if we didn't have that and we score, that's a drastically different yeah. ending. Changes um, momentums and everything. Changes, yeah. So you're looking so at right. you're looking at 33 to to what? 33 yeah. to 24. I just and, I look at that first series again when we stuff them up there by their by the end zone and they yeah. punt and then they get the ball back. Well, that just flipped the whole mo. Like the defense is yeah. our, our defense was pumped. Like, yeah, we stopped him. Let's go. Oh, and then all of a sudden, oh, I got to go back on the field. Yeah. And it flipped there. So that was a big momentum change, which can, you know, that worried me right away. It's like, oh my gosh, this can really drastically. And it took us a while to like shift back and get back. You know, that's why I think the first half was the way it was. It's like, yeah. if that doesn't happen, it could be a totally different first half. So, oh, yeah. Either way, you know, pulling the W is awesome. You know, what, you know, looking at these, you know, uh, individual, you know, we'll, we'll probably talk a little later about it because I think we have some some uh, fan questions here. But you know, the, the Ayat nine for nineteen, five was five for seven. The, both had ninety yards. You know, you go down to rushing. Eli Gilman had eighty nine yards, two touchdowns. Average was about five point nine, and, and Osmo was right there. He was averaging four point five, but only eight carries. Ayat had six carries, but you know that thirty yard. He has a 30, 30 yards for a loss with those sacks. Um, you, you look at Stevie Rocky Junior. I thought he would have probably gotten a little bit more as well, but he only had one carry for about six yards as well. So, um, and I was really impressed by Xavier Harris with the receptions. Um, he really, yeah. really did a good job. 
and I really like him in that kind of role as well. Yeah, I, 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 I'm glad to see that we're using him in that slot and stuff just yeah. because we've got so much talent in the backfield. Yep. And so he he can play that other position. We can get him out, you know, get your playmakers on the field. And so glad to see that you're doing that. And uh, he seems to be really enjoying it, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And then you look at the the defensive side, you know, Ter- uh, Terrell had 10 t- total tackles yeah. uh, via KO, which I was really impressed with him. He is a he is a big man. Yeah. Holy cow. Um, really did good. I, I think that, you know, with all all that going into it, you know, our, our back end of our defense really played really well. Yeah. If you took out some of the, the amazing catches that they made, um, it looks drastically different. So. Yeah. No, I, I agree 100 percent. It's they played they played very well. We can yeah. play better, but we still played pretty well. I mean, there's just, there's just yeah. little tweaks here and there. Um and, and two, we had a lot of new faces on that defense and stuff. So, yeah. It's, well, you look at like, those new faces. Uh, Caleb Otoliski, mm-hmm. uh, the freshman from uh, San, uh, San Diego State, he had six tackles. Yeah, uh, half half for a loss, or tackles for a loss. So, well, um, I you noticed Loud was out there a lot. True Keon freshman. Loud. Yep. Yeah, and that the way they played him, that tells me that we're going to play him a lot more. Um, I don't. Ford, think Prince Ford was out there too. Yeah, it looks like too. So, so again, like we talked about last week, getting the rotation. We're going to see that, especially if you want to make deep runs, you need to have yep. a good rotation, keep these guys fresh, yep. and then too, you see how they work together. And so, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, overall, I'm I'm happy with what I saw, and I think that yeah. we need to progress here. So, um, I was a little pissed this morning when I saw that we got uh, ranked fourth now. In the fourth instead of third neighbors or, or third now but uh at the same time i thought to myself well that's just gonna piss our guys off a little bit more and get them fired up anytime that happens so i'm sure as soon as that happened they all saw it and they're just like okay whatever well, you look at, you look at who, media, we're gonna show you here so you look at who the cats played new mexico which they should have lost that game yeah and utah yeah. tech Heck, like yeah. a serious like well and, <laughs> yeah I'm like, not going to talk ridiculous. About but yeah, there's anyways, it's uh look at our schedule now coming up. I mean, we've got UND, I think they're 23rd now. 23rd, they went up one. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then not to look too far ahead, but Western Carolina, mm-hmm. I think Ooh. they're right now too, right? Yes, they are. And yeah. I'll look, I'll find that here. But so where I'm going with this is like our schedule where some people are like, oh, the Grizz kind of have a weaker schedule. We've heard that from some 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 people out there. Yeah, but those are all, all the naysayers, though. Too. Right, like, because we're not playing the Sac yeah. States of the world and the Idaho's of the world. Well, yeah, we're going to be playing. I mean, we're playing in the heart of Missouri Valley. We're playing a ranked team this week who beat the crap out of North Dakota State last year. Um, yeah. And and then we're going to play that uh, Western Carolina team. Uh, yeah. Eastern Washington looks like they're kind of showing up now to the party. Weber's now ranked. I mean, like, it's, it's going to be a, a – a very tough schedule, but also a good schedule because it's gonna we're proving it. Like yeah. all these games we got coming up, it's proving me games. So we're gonna go out and prove it to them. Like, hey, you know, we're gonna beat the crap out of all these teams or beat them. You know, if we don't blow them out, as long as we keep winning, that just shows where we're at and the level of football we're playing. So Western Carolina went from twentieth to seventeen with a loss. Right. So but that's that's they were playing NC State. Old yeah. Co- Coach Dorn, who was our DB coach back when I was there. Um, they gave North North Carolina State everything that they wanted. I mean, there was they could have yeah. won that game. So yeah, um, I watched a little bit of that. That's a good football team. I'm excited to watch their film and break it down before we play that team. But first, first Kings first though. Yeah, we got to go take out UND. So yeah, we we've that that team is going to be. Uh, I, I watched a, a little bit of their their loss to Iowa State and. Uh, uh, they're a good team. Yeah, no, they uh, they are a dang good team. So, uh, are you ready to just go right into them? Sure. Yeah, we can do last, that. I mean, anything else? On the game? I guess last thoughts are is uh, nothing too surprising, other than a few a few of the players that we didn't see right away. But happy with the play of the Grizz. Um, the, uh, the other comments I want to say is the people that were at the game. I keep hearing that it felt like it was a playoff crowd. 
So it seemed like a play. Yeah, playoff game. I mean, it was, it was good on the whole uh, crowd, all the fans showing up and making a lot of noise and, and you know putting forth that. And I guess also, this is pretty cool. So there was four false starts caused by the our crowd. You know that, that mm-hmm. happened. Yep. Well, yep. apparently McDonald's was like, "Hey, free cheeseburgers or something," if they got three or more, and they got four. And so, like the next day, I guess McDonald's was just packed. Everybody getting oh, their free cool. cheeseburger or whatever it was. So that's pretty cool that McDonald's did that. I wonder what they'll up it to for the next home game if they do it again. Because who knows they how might, <laughs> they might rethink that and like, yeah. um, let's not I'm do sure that. not all twenty five thousand showed up, but that's a lot of hamburgers you're giving away. So that's uh, awesome. but I think that's pretty cool because we've always talked about having that uh like a, a false start counter or something like oh, that yeah. in the north end zone or you know, yep. anywhere in there. And the fact that McDonald's was like brought that up and sponsored that, I think that's pretty cool. So that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, I think, you know, final thoughts for me, um, watching it, I was frustrated, but knowing that who we didn't have on there and, and the way that we, the way we usually play, um, wasn't that right. right. That, that's not how we usually play. That's not how the defense usually plays. Um, it is a first game out of here. That was not the team that we thought was going to be playing. Us. Well, that's always so hard too. Like we, we had no film to watch it. No, so it was all just trying to find information and stuff. And I mean, the yeah. one piece that we got a nine, he he showed up and he was, you yeah. know. So, um, yeah. Now that we got a little more film, like on UND and stuff, I feel a little bit more like understanding that just kind of going off what we're hearing and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and, uh, let's get into UND. So sure. you know, the guys, the background. Uh, last year they were five and three in the conference of the Missouri Valley. They're seven and five. They were a playoff team. Um, they're ranked preseason number five in the Missouri Valley. Um, they were 22nd in the AFCA or a- AFCA, mm-hmm. and now they're 23rd in the stats. So they're probably a little bit higher in the um, AFCA, um, the, co- the coaches pool. So uh, their last game, they did uh, lose to Iowa State 21 to three, I believe it was, uh, which – that game was a whole lot closer. If you look at, if you go back and watch that game, it was fourteen to three in in the, the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, and if a couple bounces go their way, it's a it's a lot different um, story. They they missed a a field goal at the end to make it twenty one six. So yeah, um, you know that's a hostile environment that they played in, and they they looked like they they, they belonged. So yeah. Um. Their their new quarterback, I guess he was a backup last year. Number six. Yeah, the Simon Romfo or whatever. Uh, he played mm-hmm. on special teams and he was a reserve QB. Uh, he did really well. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that he kind of knew what his limitations were, and he 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 has the ability to go and run. Um, but then also they just have a lot of good pieces around him they do. where they don't have to do that. Yeah. The so. one thing I noticed watching uh, watching the film is when Iowa State did get through and hit him and stuff, mm-hmm. it definitely rattles him. And oh, he yeah. He throws yep. balls all over the place. And so, uh, you know, when, when he's under pressure hard, he makes a lot of mistakes. So yeah. one of my notes was like, if we could blitz, blitz, and blitz us some more, you know, just keep getting pressure on him, I think – Especially in these passing downs, that can really rattle him, and especially on his art, you know, decisions on some of these RPO plays that they're running. Yeah. Um, if he's got, you know, our, our D line linebackers just constantly in his ear, that could uh, make a long day for him. And you know, we really want that, especially with uh, number one uh, Belquist. Oh um, man, he is he's legit. <laughs> that's if, yeah, their receiver number one. He's their go to. This guy makes. He makes plays. The notes I took was great hands, big playmaker. Yeah. Need to contain this kid. If, I mean, if, is, if you good. if you want some yardage and you need a tough play, you know they're going like like yeah. even like the guys on the uh, I think it was like Fox. Mm-hmm. Okay, they need a, some yardage here. They're probably going to go to Bo. Like like yeah. they knew it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, Simon Romfer was seventeen of thirty for one twenty one and an interception. Uh, a couple of those like that he threw that were incomplete could have been an interception. Um, so, you know, I, I think that that's probably a, like a chink in the armor for them is I, I totally agree with you, Luke. He, he's not going to 
he's going to feel some of the pressure that we're going to unleash on him. Right. And if we can, um, you know, double one or just we have – he's the guy we have to just make sure that we always know where he's at because he's their go-to. Yeah. But like Adam was just saying – a lot of these passes, if we're right there and we're making breaks for the ball or hitting hitting the receivers hard, there's a good chance that we could get these picks. Where we've, yep. in the past, where we're tip drilling it and things like that, um, and that could really help. I mean, I, I feel like our safeties and DBs and corners are very good, and that yep. can make for a long day for them. And so, hopefully, that helps. But even if we shut down one, they've got some really good running backs too. Well, and just knowing that that Coach Hauk mentioned that in his. Uh, weekly press conference that our DBs didn't make the the push on the ball in the first half. Yeah. I think that's going to be something that he gets on them about. I, that I would expect more than one interception. If I was on, on the betting odds, I, I would mm-hmm. be betting um, the, the the over on that, yeah. um, just on how we're going to want to get up, get over these guys. Uh, but like you said, you know, running backs, they have some very good running backs. Yeah, number 29. Um, is very yeah, hard. 20, yeah is, I think his name is, is Isaiah I, Isaiah Smith. I apologize. I didn't get their names today. No, no, I got I got them right here. I've got them right here. I was here. like, I just wrote down numbers when watching the yep. film this morning. I was like, okay, 28, was, 20, and 29 are three of their running backs, and they all yep. look good. Yeah, so Isaiah Smith, he's the senior, I believe. Uh 12 he had 12 carries for 50 yards, averaging about 4.2. You know, and then Simon Ronfo, their quarterback, he had 11 carries for 44. Uh, and then you've got their honorable mention for the Missouri Valley, Valley Gavin Zybarth. Uh, 12 carries, 39 yards, 3.2 yards a carry. And then Sawyer Seidel, 5 carries, 36 yards. He was averaging over 7.2 yards a carry. Jeez. Uh, so, yeah, they've got some big guys on the front line. They like to run the ball. Yep. And they like to sprinkle in, like each you lull you to with that rush, and then they throw. And they've got Bo Belquist, their wide receiver, man. Six receptions, 43 yards. It wasn't a great stat line, but man, some of the plays, some of the catches that he made. Uh well, he's, he is, he's just a tough receiver, too. Like yeah. they go up for those contested catches and yep. Um the he's a played. first. He's a first team uh, Missouri Valley guy. As, that as that well, doesn't so. surprise me. I didn't know that, but that does not surprise anyone. Yeah, he was preseason first team, so uh, something. That, and then they have a Liberty transfer, King Dennis, uh, going into the year he, last or last year, fifteen catches, two hundred eleven yards. Uh, he had two catches for twelve yards. Um, but they use that Isaiah Smith so well too out of the backfield, which. That kind of was a uh, scary for me to watch Missouri State, which they did that so well with their running backs this game, this last game, when we would over, you know, yeah, over, blitz over, over and pursue they would, stuff, yeah, yeah, over pursue and they would they just throw it right down to their, their running back. We yeah. cannot do that. There, with this team. there was just re- seeing this, some rewatching some of our film from last week. Our guys got too excited about like, oh, I'm going to go make this play instead of doing their assignment. Yeah, this is your guy. Stay on him. Your other guys will make the play, and so that's yeah, where I think that's that's coachable, and so it doesn't worry me too much. It's just like I think some of it is the excitement of playing in Washington Grizzly at a night game and all this. You're so amped up. Sometimes it's like, okay, just calm down just a little bit, just yep. do your job, and, and it'll all work out. So um, the other one that I noticed, um, number forty four, places like a true like old school fullback for them. Yeah, that's um, Jaden Norby. Okay, and he is he's a tough kid. Like he runs yeah. and he'll blow up the end and stuff. So that's another kid we got to take, you know, yep. keep an eye on cuz he's a he's a hard-nosed player and he's going to be there trying to blow up our ends or linebackers coming through to protect six and also open these holes up for the running backs. So So they um, use him as a fullback and they also list him as a tight end. As a tight end, um, okay. And he's a second team Missouri Valley as well. So. so that's where like that tight end side they're using him. Um sometimes I noticed in the high, Iowa game they had a, a heavy play where they yep. direct snap it right to the tight end and he just yep. runs kind of like wildcat style but right to the tight end. Yeah. Um so we got to watch out for that too and just be prepared. But 
And he doesn't yeah. catch a lot of balls. He's mm-hmm. usually either running or he's blowing up the play for blowing the up, running backs. Yeah, blowing up the holes. That's where he yeah. reminds me of that, like, listed as tight end. Like, I didn't know that. I was like, he looks like a dang fullback out there. He looks like that. Three, four. Yeah, like, it looks like the old-time uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers all stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, all-star. that's what yeah. that, that that's what he reminds me of is, like, yeah. he's in there to blow people up so that they can run the ball. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so, I these are all people we got. I mean, if we're seeing this, we know that the coaches are going to see it and stuff. So, yeah. Um, you know, they, they've they got some uh, – their punter, uh, Luke Silverndale, averaged about 39.81 yards, um, 10 inside the 20, three, three that were 50-plus. Um, and I'm trying to look up their – that was their stats from last year. Sure. Um, see if they have any stats for uh, kicking – um, punting. Yep. Luke Siverndale, four punts, 39.3. So he's pretty much on his average there. Their kicker, CJ Elrics, he was one for two. Um, his long was 26 and then he, he missed one wide, right? Sure. Um, and so he last year, he only kicked six field goals. I think they had, they had ex- some problems with their field goal kicker and they put him later on. Um, and so, after you get after the 30 yards after him, he's not con- that yeah, as consistent. consistent. Sure. Now, like last year, he was one for two of anything over 40. And that's probably mainly kicking in the dome because that's really Exactly. Cool. Yep. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting because, like, even with – and, Luke, even with <laughs> punting in the dome, you would think your average would be a whole lot bigger than that. Right. Right? Yeah. 39 and you're punting in a well, dome? I think right now they had that one punt over the, in the Iowa game that was like a messed up punt and they dropped it. He kicked, picked it up and kicked it. And if you look, it's like this line drive and it goes 70 some yards right to the end zone. Like before, it was like, that's just dumb luck there. Yeah. So, yep. Um, yeah. But like, uh, if we look at their defense too, like I got some, some notes there. Um, yeah. The best defense. defender that I saw uh, is number 27. On their D, uh, he's their best pass defender out there. Um, uh, is it Antonio Blewett? Okay. I believe. Uh, let me see. Sorry, I'm get my – No, you're good. So, the the thing, though, is, like, I think the outside run game, because the DBs could play – they play way off for UND. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, there's – I think the outside run game worked for us, but then also in the passing game, their safeties play off. They usually run, like, a one-high safety look, but yep. – when they are playing zone, there's definitely holes in there that like Iowa State was exploiting and stuff. Oh, but yeah. I think we could too with our receivers. Now the other thing you look at too is both their corners like to play a lot of man, which yeah. with our speed and stuff, we I mean it to me it looks like there should be a lot of opportunities for us to throw the ball downfield. Well, and you don't have the the weather to, to deal with it too because you're right. in the dome. Yeah, um, we're in the dome. Yeah. In our, and our that guys, Iowa State game, there was holes galore in yeah. there. There's whole oh, all gosh. sorts of holes out there in the <laughs> secondary. And I think I think we can see that and exploit that too, especially with yeah. you know the receivers we have and a coaching staff. Um, the big thing that our defense, our offensive line needs to worry about is like their D line. You know they kind of run this three man front with a, a a linebacker down, kind of like what we're doing. But they like to switch up their fronts a lot yeah. to try yeah. to confuse it to confuse the offensive line. And so the one thing is though, like our guys have been practicing against our guys our defense so much. And we do a lot of that same stuff. Yeah. And so I don't think that'll th- throw them off. And I, I was impressed with their offensive line for the most part. Um, in this opener, they, oh, yeah. they were playing a type of football. I mean, there was a few mistakes here and there where guys missed a block here or missed a pickup, but for the most part, they played pretty damn well. And, um, well, and I liked what they yeah. were doing too, because they, they had sets where they were going that traditional three, but then they, they actually had, uh, uh, Ramos and um, Noose or Ramos and uh, Cashmitter are in there at the same time with a pr- traditional four man oh, yeah. uh, line as well. So um, I, I think that going into it as something that we are worrying about, like I feel pretty good with the defensive line. Yeah, I think D line. Right, I, mean, I, I guess I was referring to our offensive line. Oh, sorry. Uh, we sorry. No, it's okay, but I, both both lines. Yeah, I was impressed with. On yeah, our side. and they, like I said. Our line's just going to have to just watch these fronts and how they're switching up. Just make sure they're getting their assignments. That's just, It's yep. going to be more just like making sure everybody knows which coverage we're running and stuff. Um, you know, and it's going to be loud in there. 
Uh, you oh, and yeah. me, I think they pull a pretty good crowd, and uh, especially a night game again. Um, yeah, you know, the, the Grand Forks should pull a pretty good crowd and get people fired up. You know, so you were saying the defense. So you, the guy on defense, what guy were you saying? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Sorry, that's that's. Um, I mean, just watch the Iowa Lance State. Rucker. Lance Rucker. Okay, the watching their film. He was the guy that kept popping out to me. I was like, man, yeah. this guy's good. Um, so the, their linebackers are tremendous. Um, mm-hmm. The Wyatt Pettigrew, that's their leading um, tackler coming back. Uh, he's the second team Missouri Valley Conference. Um, last year, 72 tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, four sacks, four fumble recoveries. And then they have Malachi McNeil, mm-hmm. um, 68 tackles, seven tackles for loss, three sacks. And then Kelly Kaysen. 37 tackles last year and um, they all had, and I, I don't know if this is, this is Fox sports. So I don't know if they're <laughs> legit because they're only saying that those guys only had three tackles. Um, and I don't know how accurate that is because they said that their, their top tackler was only at three tackles. So oh. um, I don't know if that's legit. I'll go to an actual North Dakota website and see what they say, but um yeah, those are the some of the ones that the leading um tackler is coming back for that football yeah football team so so here's the other thing i want to bring up about this playing at und the last time we played there was in 2018 yep and they beat the piss out of us yep, it they was did. 41 to 14. yep um i guarantee you like last year we talked about a lot of the revenge tour i guarantee yeah. you bobby has not forgotten that and that score is up in our locker room, and they're talking about that. Yeah, and we owe them one because the last time they embarrassed us there. Yeah. And so I, I have a feeling that you know our team's gonna be ready to play, and they're gonna go in there, and you know I I, I feel like the coach are gonna have them ready, like hey, we owe these guys one. Yeah, uh, and the fact that this is a, this is a playoff team. Um, oh yeah, this is gonna so, be a playoff team. I mean, this is this they're gonna most likely be a playoff team again. Yep. So I'm sure. You know, the coaches are watching film from last year, like when they like opponents. We played North Dakota State and they beat, yeah. them, beat them down. So, <laughs> yeah, they did. Um, I'm sure we're, they're looking at film like that too. Even though this is a new team, you still look at some of that older stuff and they're looking at the Iowa State coverage and just, you know, breaking them down and figuring out, you know, how, where we can exploit them. And if, if Adam and I are sitting here going, hey, look in the past game. Yeah, our coaches are going to be they're, they're they're much better than what we can do. We know <laughs> uh, they're going to figure that out and and figure out ways that we can win. And I yeah. think the biggest key for us is just everybody doing their assignment. Don't yep. don't try to do too much. Just do your job and execute, and we'll be fine. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be um, it, it, it. This is this is going to be a tough tough matchup. A, a road game is going to be hard, right? So um, it's definitely going to be interesting. Um, I, I think that their their defense as well. They have a DB Antonio Blewett um, on there, and yeah, the, the, those numbers were off, guys. They're off by two or three tackles each. Um, so um, yeah, they had Antonio Blewett was their leading tackler the last game with five tackles. Um, then you've got Josh Neverity, Malachi McNeil, Case and Kelly, Wyatt uh, Pettergo, and those were those three linebackers. And then you got that Lance Rucker as well that uh, Luke mentioned. Yeah. Um, they're a good defense. They're a good yeah, defense. Yeah. They're, they're a lot of like that bend don't break defense. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, I I'm not expecting a route in this game just because it's no. a it's a it's an away game. It's a Missouri Valley team that I think probably is going to be in the top three. I don't think South Dakota is going to be that good this year. I, I'm not buying South Wait, Dakota. I, I'd, yeah, yeah I, I would buy North Dakota way better, way more yeah, than South. I Dakota. think I think UND is a better team than USD is too. I agree yeah. there. Yeah, I think you're you're top in the Missouri Valley or South Dakota State, North Dakota State, UND, yep. and then yep. USD, and then actually probably Missouri, Missouri State. Missouri State. Yeah, and yeah. I think really they're probably the fifth best team. Yeah. So. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see. Um, and I think we kind of went into what, what we think they should do. Um, what does our defense need to do? So they got to stop the run. Well, I think the number <laughs> one, stop the, well, we got to stop the run and then contain one. Yeah. I mean, we've got to contain number one. That's, 
that's their go-to. I mean, that's yep. his safety blanket. I mean, they're, they're and he's a he can catch just about anything. So uh, we need to know where he's at on the field at all times, and yep. then just contain and stop that run. If we do those two things, I mean, we should be just fine. So. Oh, and it's interesting if you look at their 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 schedule. They played at Iowa State. They play us this next week. They actually uh, they go to uh, they play at Idaho State. Oh, really? That's and then they play San Diego, and then they get into the Missouri Valley Conference huh. schedule. Um, so they play some teams that you know. So Idaho similar State. to us, a couple yep. uh, Missouri Valley teams. They're playing a couple of Big Sky teams. Big Sky teams. So yeah, yeah definitely. I think the the coach uh, Schweiger is a good coach too, so he's going to be prepared uh, well, for us. The other thing that we haven't talked about yet is our offensive line coach came from there. Yeah, and we are yep. going to be able to get some critical information on players on that team and yep. just just other things too because of his knowledge of being on that staff. And so, yep. um. When we've had this before in the past, where we've had other coaches that have gone somewhere else, Bobby's mentioned it that you're, you're going to change up terminology and things like that because you know that they know your terminology, and so, yeah. um, so we'll have that info, but no, don't trust it, sort of thing. But th those 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 particulars, like knowing tendencies of certain players, he may have that because of his knowledge, especially of that offensive line, which could be critical for our defensive line and, and our linebackers. So. Um, yeah, it's going to be, I mean, I think we got a little one up there because of, because of his knowledge and being able to help us a little bit. With some of those. Yeah, I, did, I definitely think it's going to, it's going to help us out in that, yeah. that aspect. So, um, I don't know how it wouldn't. <laughs> no, it's definitely going to help us. And then, you know, as the coaching staff too, as they're all coming together in the team, what better way to, to, to show your appreciation for our new offensive line coach than putting it to his former team? I mean, that's exactly. like, you know, that's everybody's going to want to win it for him too. And, and too, it's just like, you know, I was complaining about the whole cats jump on a spot with us. Well, if we take out UND and, and, and really put it to him or show him like, Hey, this, this is going to show that whole national spotlight too. Like, okay. Yeah. The Grizz yeah. are for real. And, you know, maybe Missouri state's a lot better than people thought. So, yeah. Well, and, and one thing, you know, I think that, Idaho, uh, the big hubbub right now is Idaho, you know, playing Oregon and, and well, you know, doing doing what they did against Oregon, but they just lost their, their that's, quarterback. Yeah, well. they did. They just lost their quarterback. It sounds like possibly for the season. Um, yeah, well, yeah, again, he broke his collarbone. He had surgery on it. So, I, yeah. for me, I've never broken a collarbone. I've had some friends that, you know, it was six, ten weeks that they – I don't know, doctor, but six to ten weeks that they had to heal from that – um yeah it's not a especially the quarterback that can affect your throwing motion and all that stuff so and getting hit it's not one of those things you just come back from right away so so yeah that's gonna be I, that's I gonna be that a, kid. it's that sucks yeah you never want to get injured like that but no definitely definitely not so that's gonna be interesting to see just what what the the top 25 does and how it shakes out because it, it there's gonna be some it, it, we just know that there's going to be shifting, right? Well, and there's there's um, injuries like this that happen. Yeah. Or in our case, we have a couple of guys that we thought were going to be out there playing right in it right away that aren't, and so yeah, it's that that's where you know if you have the depth and stuff, it, that's that's how championship teams are built is that depth. And yep. and we knew this was going to happen. There was a lot of guys getting rotated, and then Bobby's going to continue yep. to do that because we need to keep guys as fresh as possible, also to keep them healthy. As long as yep. possible. So it's possible with, you know, Bergen and, 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 and Grossman that they're not terribly injured. You know, we don't know, but let, let, it we could just been. be enough where they're like, hey, you know, if we let you stay out just one more week, is that going to make you 100%? Because the last thing you want to do is put in a guy at 90 and then he hurts and gets set back hurts. even more. Exactly. So exactly. you'd rather have him ready to go for, especially when it comes to conference play, than anything. Yep. So that could be why they're getting held out just going, hey, let's make sure you're 100% rather than pushing it and then it's lagging that it's just constantly bothering you the whole season. So. Well, yeah. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have that leg on through the whole season. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the worst thing that could happen. Yeah. So, um, so just by, I think he probably won last week. 
um, just because you had 40 to 17 and I had 35 to seven. So we were both way off though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes those are like, just throw them out, throw them out. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, so you want to go through predictions or do you want to do questions sure. first? We can do, we can do, uh, hang on. We can, we just got another question that popped up. That's why I was, uh, okay. I'm trying to find them on, I've, well, yeah, we, had we, had one, we had one that we forgot to answer last week, uh, Terrence. Terrence, yeah, which I so. I gave him a little insight um, privately on some stuff that I knew about. He was asking Morris about, like, freshmen and who might be playing and stuff, uh, okay. which we got into a little bit last week. But, again, I think the big one we're going to see is Loud. I mean, he played a lot, and I think we're going to continue to see him play because he's he rounds out that, that corner area for us, and, you know, we yeah. need – as many people as we can get, and he's talented. So, and I think that that also that Caleb Utola whiskey, mm-hmm. I think you're going to see him as well yeah. in there as well, just because sure. he's another another uh, big body that I think they're they're going to try to play him, and they played by Akeho as well on that linebacker slash defensive end position as well. So, yeah. um, trying to find here on Egris if we had anything on Egris. So we have a few Twitter ones, but uh, okay. we can do the. Uh, the, the points real quick. So I, I did the first okay. lap. It okay. hasn't updated 100% because it still shows, like, the rankings is the same as last week, and it doesn't have um, the uh, the records in there yet. Oh. Um, so I'm not going to go on the rankings because that's just – it didn't change anything. Um, but I did went ahead and ran the, the simulator. Okay. And, uh, the Grizz versus UND, it does have the Grizz winning, but it's close. 27-25. Oh, see, that was pretty close to what is I had. What, is what they had. Yeah. And so um, what I've got is I've got the Grizz winning 31 to 20. Okay, 31 to 20. Yep. Okay. Um, which mine's 28-21. 28-21. We're, we're, so, we're right there. Yeah. Uh, it, it's going to be a whole lot closer. It's going to be a nail biter, and I just can't. I can't do this. Can I? Can we start off with some like big like just like like last year almost killed me that run like just like nearly killed me. <laughs> yeah, but it'd be, yeah, it might start off with some teams that aren't you know those like some of these FBS teams that you saw last week that are beating them seventy to nothing or oh yeah you know, gosh these, these warm up games. But at the same time, iron sharpens iron. Exactly you know, right. If you want to, you know, the, in the words of, of Ric Flair, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. So, yeah, um, yeah. So it's I I don't have a problem with it. I, I I do think Missouri State's gonna be a lot better team in the end than most people yeah. thought. They have a dang good team, and you know, UND very well could have beat Iowa State last week. They didn't, but you know, they they hung with them. So. Um, yeah, if they can if they can stay with it and have that buy in for the whole year with not having a playoff run and just and keep on um, being that upset to to those teams, I think that they're going to have a really good year. Well, that's where I think it really is that yeah they want to be that show. Hey, no, us moving the FBS is a good choice. We're that good. Yep. Um, I believe they already have the extra scholarships going into it, so. Yeah, they do. Yep. Yeah. So that benefits them, but I think that's the whole thing because they can still win their conference if they wanted to. I think that that that's allowed, but they just can't go to the playoffs. So yeah. So going into you want to do uh, Twitter first? Sure. So yep. I I've got that... them pulled up if if you need me to read them. Okay. We got so two I points. have uh, Terrence. Um, he said, "Do you have Terrence's?" No. Did you I already don't. answer that one? Yeah. From last okay. week, I already, I already, I already hit him up. So okay, so uh, we'll should we do that one or should we just kind of skip that one? I think we we answered everything, and I okay. I get like I said, I we we DM back and forth a little bit and got him some more some insight there too. So okay, so we'll move on. Sorry, I'm going through. So the other thing I'll leave you, we did have our our QB club meeting this week, and they are almost at 700 members. I think these oh that's so awesome. Said they're like nine away. So if you're interested in QB club, sign up. You get lots That's of cool so awesome. extras. Um, this year, they were doing a whole bunch of these uh, private videos that we get links to on YouTube, and they're videos of player interviews. And you just get a lot of behind the scenes, you know, getting to know the go them a little bit more than just a, a number on the field. So you That's get, awesome. even if you just sign up now, you still get access to all that stuff. So That's awesome. So, 
Uh, Bridger Lord at B Dean Lord. B Dean Lord. Uh, so happy that for the Grizz to be back in the season. Uh, post week one question: Who was the biggest surprise absence, and which absence made the biggest difference for Missouri State? Uh, me, I thought I was I was it, Bergen, um, just with his presence um, on the punt return and what that was, and then just being that when he's there, you're going to have to look out for him. Yeah. Right. And that opens up so much other things. Um, it, it, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be huge. So yeah. that, that's who I would have. I, I would agree with you for offense. Um, I'll just talk defensive side. Riley Wilson yeah. not being out there. Yeah. was massive. The um, yep. way he affected the game last year and he's able to get in the backfield and then also contain on the outside. And just his leadership out there, uh, that was the biggest surprise for me. Like, I thought we'd see him. Yeah. Um, so, we'll, be, we'll see. I mean, we'll see if he's back this next week. I hope he is. Um, because, like I said, if we can get pressure on this quarterback and get him rattled, he's a whole different player than he exactly. is when he has time. I mean, with, like with most quarterbacks, but there's some quarterbacks that are really tough where it's like you can pound them into the dirt and they're still always up there. But this guy, just watching the film, once he starts getting pressure, he just – he isn't making the best decisions, and so I think that's that's one of our our big things that we could do is just, you know, really really put a lot of pressure on him and hit him and and get him to you know hopefully throw some bad balls and make some bad choices in the RPO game. Well, and that's why and I, we we keep on going back with that, but the Jacob Clark from Missouri State that that's he did not back down, and yeah. usually when he, he got hit a couple of times, that I was like, "Oh man, there's the." Well, I was like, "Here's that the one right? quarterback last year. That guy yeah. would beat the crap out of him. He just kept coming back. It was like Jesus." Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, he also has a follow up question here. Uh, deepest receiver core in the FCS seemed a little thin at times without Junior. Uh, not worried, but got me thinking. Who the heck is on deck behind seniors in Drew Deck? Do you guys know? Um, I know that they're really, really high on that Ladri. I can't even say his name. Bridges. He's a freshman. Yeah. Um, And then you've got, you know, Sawyer Reconelli. You've got Simpson, um, which Simpson got a catch. Yeah, he looked good. Um, so. In fact, one of the person I was watching, they're like, who's that tall guy? They need to throw him the ball some more. Um, and then Brooks, Brooks too, who we interviewed, he's Brooks Davis. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's there's some guys there. I think that we'll see get playing time. Yeah, with the four freshman rule, but I think a lot yep. of them too, because of our depth, they're hoping that they don't have to use the red shirt up if they don't need to. You yeah. know, it's like some of these guys though, if they they're playing good enough, they're going to see the field. But hopefully, just in the four games, and then we still have their their red shirt rule. Well, and and you look at it, you have Keelan White, you've got Fonts, you've yep. got. Xavier Childs, no Xavier That's Harris. Her. Xavier, sorry, Xavier Harris. Sorry. Um, so there's three got three wide receivers right there. You've got Sawyer Reconelli. You've got Simpson that are mm-hmm. going to be your backups there. Um, you know, without Bergen there, the, I think that's what you got. Yeah, and then I mean, unless then they Bergen throw in the there. freshman, you know. Yeah, which we could see. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, we've got a lot of depth there. I think the biggest thing there is catch the ball. Uh, do your yeah. job. So. Yep. Uh, Mandy Taylor, uh, quad sister, says, I'm certain you're already planning on talking about this, but which quarterback do you guys think did better? I'm of the unpopular opinion thinking that Aya is getting better, but still has some work to do. Fife stepped in, and I felt much more comfortable after that. Um, It's so hard to kind of judge those guys because y- you look at – you know, he was probably Ayat was probably pressing because they're not getting a lot of reps. They're not getting the ball. Then you also got him throwing passes and the wide receivers aren't catching them. Yeah. Uh, so I think that kind of affected him in two. And then I think that with him, you know, he's trying to battle and win this position. I think he's going to try to do more being the freshman, try to do more so that he can make those plays and, and kind of win mm-hmm. this job other than, you know, being the, uh, the leader in the clubhouse, Fife just knew what he needed to do, and he didn't. He didn't. He knew that he didn't have to be the person to make the play. He just had to distribute the ball, and I think that's kind of went where you kind of felt kind of refreshed. Is oh, 
we got this right. And you kind of had that, that, that attitude that, Hey, I'm just going to get it out to the people that I know. Well, and they caught the ball for him too, which helped. And then that helps too. Yeah. yeah. And they actually ran the ball a little bit more too. They yeah. ran a whole lot more with Eli in that second half mm -hmm. where they're like, Hey, you know, we got away from this. We're just going to run it down their throats. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> typical, you know, that old Bobby ball where usually the second half run the ball a lot more. Yeah. I don't know. So my, in my opinion, I, I think, I think I got the better quarterback out of the two of them. Um, I like his reads. I like what he's doing. I, he's still, he's, I look him back there and he has some of that sixth sense where he can sense guys coming um, like his dad had. So, um, but again, he's young, but he's progressing a lot. Um, yeah. I still, I do think he's the better out of the two, but I'm very impressed with Fife because I had heard some stuff in spring ball and camp that he wasn't looking too hot and he showed up and, took care of the ball and did what he's supposed to do. So yeah. Um, coming into week two, we're going to see them both again. Uh, they're probably both kind of like on that pitch count thing where they're, you're playing or, or just seeing how they're, you know, if I think one of them's got a hot hand, you leave them in there. Um, whoever's the, the, the starter there. Um, but they're going to play them both. Yeah. So expect that uh, to happen. Um, but again, I feel way better right now than I did last year at this time with our quarterback situation. So well, it'll, it'll be interesting to see who gets the starting, right? The, I, I, I'm, I'm in the position where I think probably Fife gets the starting position and then they put Ayat back in the second position just because they like, I think they like to see how yeah. each quarterback kind of starts out. Um, see, and I think but, they're going to throw Ayat in there just from watching the film, though, like with those holes. You think so? I th yeah, I think we're on, I think we're gonna come out throwing the ball this week. Okay. I could be totally wrong, but I think we're gonna because well, I think we're gonna have to. <laughs> yeah, and the holes in their secondary. The so, so that's yeah. where I think like I get I, I think I think we can see Ayat come out again at the start. So because, that's my opinion. Yeah, so, well, and I think Fife, you know, Fife didn't do bad, did, didn't do poorly on throwing no, the ball. I, no. I just think that Ayat has the better throw, yeah. and the he can make more of the throws that you want. Yeah. Um, and so, um, it'll be one I'll be excited to see who starts instead. You know, and then again, I don't think to Bobby, I don't think it matters. I think it's more like, yeah. okay, here's what we want to do for our game plan out of those two quarterbacks for this game plan. Who should we, we go with? And then, you know, they decide from there. So, yeah. So, I think we got one more. Um, yeah, we got one just like a few minutes ago from Brian, Brian Hunt, uh, yeah. Grizz fans. Uh, Luke, can you give us any inside takes on away game travel? Since I think he's probably the same uh, going towards your neck of the woods. Logistics, lodging, meals, prep sessions, et cetera. Yeah. So I think I think where he's talking about is just like what, what it's like when you're on the road. And so yeah. um, like I you know, there Bobby's travel day, it looks like is gonna be on Friday. So um, I believe they're flying in. I don't think they're gonna drive, make them drive. Uh um, size. Yeah. So that's a long freaking I think that's a yeah, it's way too far to drive yeah. all the way on the other side of North Dakota. But they'll fly in. My guess is they're probably – it's a charter, so they'll fly right into Grand Forks there. Um, but, like, you know, the one thing I remember when we first were flying back in the day, it was like I never knew you got dehydrated on the plane, but when you fly, you get dehydrated. So they're going to make yep. all the guys pound water on the flight over. Then you get there, and for Bobby, my understanding is a lot of routine. So he's going to – you're going to be going into walkthroughs, uh, meetings at the hotel. So that's why they rent the whole hotel out so they can have meeting rooms. We used to do walkthroughs in the parking lots and stuff um, and, you know, run the scout team out there and whether it was offense or defense and do all your walkthroughs out and sometimes, like I said, in the asphalt parking lot. But wow. again, it's just walkthroughs. And then there's also film. So you'll have your film guys bringing all the film in so that you can watch some more film. Um, nowadays it's all digital. So it's yeah. uh, videos. Yeah, easy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's way easier. Um, but they'll be, you know, watching film and then they have tons of food. Like we used to get RB sandwiches. Those when they came out, they'd bring us sandwiches and there's just all that food. But I know for Bobby, he's always talking about making it this, you know, the same routine all the time. So it's just like habit. And so whatever that routine is, that's what they're going to be doing. Um, okay. but it's a, it's a lot of this, that same thing. And you're, you're, um, you're, I don't know if they have their own hotel rooms. I think a lot of them have roommates. They room two guys room together, but they have that whole hotel there. And then, you know, the hardest part I think for like these trips is it's a night game. Yeah. So, what do you do? They get up on Saturday. They're gonna do. They're gonna have breakfast together as a team. They'll have more meetings, 
and they're going to try to keep it as routine as possible. There's still a lot of downtime. And so, you know, you got to kind of get yourself up. And so they may shift it, maybe let the guys sleep in a little bit. I don't know. Um, But then, you know, they'll have pregame meals, walkthroughs again, your, your pre-team meetings and just all that. And then they get to the stadium and go from there. So, yeah, because it's a, it's a 6 p.m. tip there, 5 p.m. tip mountain time. Yeah. Um, so that's another late you mean, game. You mean kickoff? Tip? Kickoff, yeah, gosh. <laughs> I can't talk today. Good Lord. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I can't yeah, so it's, I mean, it, they're, you know, I'm glad that they're actually going over and playing UND at this time of year because, man, you get in the late fall and stuff, the weather, I mean, even though they're playing a dome, logistics and things like that can suck getting yeah. there yeah so um yeah but i hope that answers your question brian um brian's the the guy that has the number one tailgate spot he's the first one there always out at uh I, I think he's moved this year but he was out by um uh the uc before oh, okay the parking lot next to mount sentinel and stuff so oh that's awesome so, yeah awesome well do we have anything on Egris or? Oh, yeah, we have Egris. Sorry. Good Lord. I am like. Hey, it's Labor Day. We all both have yeah. the day off today. So. Goodness gracious. I spent the uh, whole day at the lake today and, you know, got back. Did you get sunburn? I got a little bit. You can kind of see the sunglasses. There you go. Know. Watching the videos. But it was, a, it was a great, great weekend. It's friends nice. and stuff. And I was so, I was like. Thank God the Grizz won. I had all these people that aren't Grizz fans <laughs> come over, a bunch of Nebraska fans and stuff, and watch the game. And it was funny because I had we well, there was a fire ban, so we couldn't have a fire, but we had the TV set up and I had like chairs set up all the way like half moon around the, the TV, right? And so I'm standing yeah. off to the right to start the game because I don't sit, I walk, I stand. <laughs> I know that's the same thing you do. And so I'm standing. <laughs> By the end of the game, I'm in front of the TV with one other guy, my buddy Matt, who's a big Ohio State fan, and my daughter. And then I didn't even think about it. We're all just standing in front of the TV. And the game's over, and I'm high-fiving everybody. And they're like, I'm like, what did you think? And they're like, well, we saw up until like about the third, between the halfway through the third quarter, then we were just looking at your butt the whole time. I was like, oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I them, and I was right in front of it, wasn't I? I didn't even think about the rest yet. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Can't well, help yeah, but I'm I, a little excited for those games. So I was uh camping, so I, I actually watched the game on Sunday. Um, so yeah, uh no reception where I went, but it was a good time. It was a good time camping with the the fam and yeah. uh yeah, came back. So that's what um, this Sunday or this Saturday in the game. I actually I have to be at the yeah, you were saying. Colorado game for a work thing where my I work for Anderson Windows and we're sponsoring a tailgate there. And did you get out of it? No, I have to be there. I don't, I'm, I'm short a rep right now, and so I got to go down to Lincoln, and I'll be there for the game on on Saturday. But our game is at the same time, and so I don't know. I'll, I'll probably be at the Nebraska Colorado game <laughs> on my phone watching the Grizz play. So here's the, the wild thing, though. I did find out Nebraska plays Montana State's volleyball team that afternoon. Really? And so I might go to that game where my Grizz stuff. Just to, just to there you go. Do it. So. Do it. That's awesome. I'm going to be there anyways, but yeah. exactly. Uh, Hutter says, regards to the bubble, what will Bobby like the most year round opportunity to practice or the fact he can lock the door and let no one in? I think that second part, the fact that, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was funny. Cause like when the team was playing on the bubble, like, sure. or, you know, there's the bubbles not up yet, but when they were practicing on there, like during Pearl jam and these other yeah. ones, even QB club members weren't out there. Now you could still watch it if you just stood outside the fence. Yeah. They're like, yeah, it's under construction. So that would be my <laughs> guess is he'll, he'll like it. Cause like you can shut the doors, you know, just like when you play in the stadium, he can shut the doors if he wants. You yeah. Can still go up to the end, but now it's like, literally you could just shut the doors. Yeah, exactly. No but that bubble is going to be huge. Like they're going to be able to use that for track and us and soccer. I mean, there's so many things. And from what I understand, yeah. they're going to let like the students use it too, like for intermittent. Yeah, yep. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. So. Yeah. I'd have to agree with you on that one. I uh, like to do that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, PDX Grizzly. Can you give a letter grade to each segment, offense, defense, and special teams and what the overall GPA was? Offense, uh, letter grade, 
compared to what that's the, the thing is is it compared to like where we were at last year or like overall i would give it a probably right. i a just got mine okay uh i'd give the offense a c okay you're a little harsher than i, I said b minus oh you said d minus b minus oh i thought you said d i'm like no, b Whoa. b minus b minus okay. because uh they did win and they came back i mean it started off in that c range but i think that Towards the end of the game, that they played well enough with our running backs and stuff, that I'd give them a B minus. Okay, um, defense. I, I would give a C too because, like, some of the mistakes. I yeah. I think that we're better than that, and I, I just give. Them, I'm not giving you plus or minus. I just give a C. See, and I'm I'm a plus or minus. You, now Adam's the teacher, <laughs> so he's just like no, you know. No, see, I I, I teach at a uh, <laughs> elementary school, so we don't have pluses or minuses. Is, we is just it, have flat like no. grades. <laughs> is it the S's and the E's and the U's? No, oh, no, oh, we have yeah, one, two, high. threes, and fours. No. So, so <laughs> on the defensive side, I also give a minus. Um, and then finally, special teams, I gave him a C plus. So, I would, just I would, I would of, agree with you on the special teams. Um, you know, I, I feel like, again, I'm comparing him to last year. and I, I think the reason I've given the B- minus to the O is just mainly because I feel like the quarterback plays a lot more elevated than it was where we were at this time true. last year. True. Um, true. Yeah. So, so yeah, they're sitting two B, two B- minus and a C- plus for me. So, that's about a B average, I guess, for the team is what yeah, we'll so say. Mine would, be a, mine would be a C average. It'd be a C um, average. So, yeah. it's, it's, there's always room for improvement. But, again, for me – I'm thinking about where we were at this time last year. And oh yeah. I feel much better about the team and where they're at and where we're going and their identity way better than I did last year. So yeah, I I, I feel like the quarterback position is way better than we had last year. Yeah. I feel like the defense isn't as good right now, yeah. just with the, the personnel that we're missing and kind of the, some of the things that we did last game. Um I think that the special teams is uh, if you take the deck, right? You take the deck uh, fumble away, it would it would probably raise it up, right? Oh yeah, um, I'd be the extra the, the board then. Yeah, so yeah. that's really you, you, know, you, plus you only that have fumble that caused yeah. that big swing at the beginning of the game, and then the extra point, you know, and we then had blinking the extra point, but it, they yeah. all progressed. Deck got better, Morris yep. got better, and ended up being the yep. player of the week. So we, even last year, we had we had special teams issues. Oh yeah. Wasn't that last year where we're in the beginning of the year we had? Yeah, I mean, always, and that's you know. historically Bobby's teams, you know, when they open, other than minus, minus, I guess, the Washington win. Yeah. Um, we usually when we open, it's kind of like, you know, they're getting their identity still, and they, his, you know, his goal is to progressively just keep getting better and better and better and better as the year goes on. And so that when you hit November, you are playing your best football. Yeah. And, you know, kicking teams' asses and just you know making making that strong push into the playoffs. So, yeah. So right now, I feel like we're up here compared to where we were last year. Like, I mean, until, we're I ahead of where we were last year. This time is what I'm saying. I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, the quarterback position, it was hard not to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At this point, last year, our quarterback position, and you know, we we got through with what we got through, but at the same time, like, well, it took that McDow- McDow- McDowell McDowell. It could only do so much. Yeah, and that, um, and that, that is yeah. That game yeah. because Northern Arizona was awful, where guys were quitting, and that changed the whole season and stuff. Yep. And I don't. I, I don't think we need that this year. I think that the team's there. I think it's just gelling, and, and you know everybody understanding, especially with all the new people on the defense and stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. getting them to you know trust each other and do their one eleventh and, and and go out there and win. So. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I can't wait for Saturday. I can't can't come uh, sooner. Soon enough. So. No kidding. But uh, yeah, we gotta wait. What four more days? Yeah. It's well. Luckily, because of this week, it's yeah. You know, every, my, I, I'm assuming most people had today off, and so yeah. short work week. And next thing you know, it'll be here. Another. It's it's weird having all these late games to start the season already. You know, with the Grizz, you know, started late this this last weekend, and now it's gonna be a. Well, I guess like, five, when you five look five at the for for Mountain yeah. Time. You look at the next game after we play North Dakota. That's Moorhead State, right? Yeah. Okay, and that should that's that's going to be a piece of cake before that Western Carolina game. Yeah. So, should all right, be. guys. Well, 
Yeah, so. should yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> first things first, we gotta go beat you, Andy. Exactly. Hey guys, uh, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Really make sure that you're you're giving us those five star ratings on Apple. We've we've picked up a couple there. Um, that helps us get out. I, the I gave us one world. This week. Yes, good job, good job, Luke. <laughs> That counts. Uh, so make sure that you do that, guys. It helps us out a lot. It gets us our podcast out to people. Um, and then also, you know, we're on the FCS Fans Nation uh, network on YouTube. Uh, so you guys can get us there. Uh, we also have at Fight on Montana uh, Facebook and yeah. also Instagram um, and Twitter. Um, Facebook, We I, I'm, I personally – I'm on my personal, and I think Luke, you are too. Yeah, I'm on my personal too, but I yeah. I help moderate some of the Grizz pages too yeah. out there, and so a lot of people know that. Yeah, yeah, we converse through all the different. There's there's a lot of great Grizz pages out there. Exactly, we talk to each other and stuff. So the other thing I know that comes up a lot, like I saw this a lot last week, is where do I watch the game? ESPN Plus this ESPN week. ESPN Plus. Yep. Or listen to Riley and and uh, um, Greg on there. Well, or you can even sync them up together too if you want. So. Yeah, and, and they have a new uh, radio, don't isn't that like K Grizz? Yeah, K Grizz. So it's still working with the other one, KVGO or whatever. But K Grizz is kind of their new one that Ace uh, Sourwine's on too, and they're doing like their daily drive thing. Yep. All talking about Grizz sports. Um, so if you don't want to hear anything about the cats at all, which you know I like nice. listening to Coulter and all, but you know I, they they have to talk both sides of the state. Yeah. So yeah. I just have to turn it off for that other part, but. Um, yeah, it's ESPN Plus is where you can find it. Yeah. Um, you can get that on your Roku, your, you know, your Amazon Prime Sticks, or yep. you know, your phone. They even usually have a free trial if you're wanting to do that. So yeah, I think it's like a seven day free trial. Yeah, I think it's like a seven day trial. But I mean, if you're an FCS fan, I would just recommend spending the money, getting ESPN Plus because you can watch all sorts of FCS games and other FBS yep. games. I mean, if you just love college football, it's worth it. In my it's, it's definitely worth the 11 bucks. Or yeah. And then too, if you want to rewatch the games, like I find out we are watching our game against Missouri state as soon as we're done with this again. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So de definitely uh, check us out there, guys. Uh, make sure you, you do that. And uh, as always uh, go Grizz. Heck yeah. Go Grizz. <laughs>